And we are live. What is going on, everybody? We are back, and we officially have some movie trivia showdown stuff to discuss. Uh, big, big stuff happened over the past weekend. Uh, yesterday, not Friday, but yesterday. Two matches, cutscenes, storylines, a lot of stuff to dive into today. Uh, and we're doing it in full spoilers fashion. So if you are here and you have not seen yesterday's pay-per-view, there will be full spoilers for everything that was yesterday's Schmodown Season 9 opener. Um, and I'm not doing it alone today. We have the usual crew. We have Jill. We have Brian. We have Molly. And one addition today, he is back. Frankie Numbers on uh, one of the other shows that matters here in the movie trivia Schmodown universe. So, this one? This um, one? I, no, that one too. I almost, I, I, I almost too. threw his award in the trash you mean when I saw one. it. Just yeah. to say. No, I mean, this, I mean this one, the one that you guys were also up for that this didn't one. win. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I, his, his, hey, his we were nominated life? twice, Frankie. Yeah. But now, yeah. yeah. Well, I couldn't be nominated for the other one. <laughs> his his award was with my award, and I was very tempted to throw his in the trash and just be like, I don't know where your award is. I don't know. I don't have to do it. Uh, well, Jill, I'll start with you. How how's your weekend been so far? Mine is on stuff. How's it been? I was good, busy, busy weekend. I had a bridal shower uh, yesterday morning. You getting married? Uh, no, unfortunately, oh. no. Um, oh, or fortunately, I have like four weddings this year, Frank. <laughs> I'm so done with weddings. There's so many going on. People are um, still doing that. That's crazy. It's good for them, right? I know. Yeah, yeah. Um, one of my really good friends, I'm actually in her bridal party. So we had her bridal shower. And then afterwards, I hung out with some uh, with some friends uh, last night. Uh, Frankie may or may not have been there. I can neither confirm nor deny. Well, we're not friends, so that's, that's no, crazy. yeah. So he was he, Frankie. I, I hung out with some friends, and Frankie was, and I was, yeah, I, was <laughs> I was around, yeah. <laughs> but it was fun. It was a it was a late it was a late Saturday LA night, which uh, I, I'm glad to. It's good to be back in that usual. I miss that drive. It's an hour drive for us, but you know I missed oh. it. So I get to. I, it's worth it because I get to see. Nice, good people, <laughs> and wrong. Frankie. Not wrong. <laughs> Brian Moore. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> wait, so, wait, what'd you say, Joe? I said, I, it's, I said the hour drive is worth it because I get to see some good, nice people, and Frankie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was. Yeah. Well. <laughs> uh, Brian, what about you? How's your weekend been, man? Chilling. Didn't really do anything. Uh, watched movies, and that was about it. What'd you watch? Uh, the King's Man, mm -hmm. uh, and rewatched Eternals. Got it. It's a good hmm. movie. So you wanted to fall asleep? <laughs> I, I love Eternals. Eternals King's Man, <laughs> King's the King's Man was better than the second one. I oh, think. I got, I got. I love, I love the second one. The, the second, second one is, one is crap. I yeah, know, sir. I like the first one a lot. The second sir. one, first I one is started. Yeah. The, here's the here's the chat coming in with the king's man yeah the king's man i got some thoughts <laughs> on the king's man i also watched it this week i got some thoughts yeah uh molly what about you uh, it's good time uh we had really nice weekend uh weekend here and good weather so we did a bunch of stuff and yeah it's a good time sounds very exciting <laughs> did a bunch of stuff you know <laughs> i'm just glad it's starting to actually be light past four o'clock <laughs> oh yeah so we're getting there we're, we're almost there we're Checking away home stretch home stretch and frankie we heard a lot about your weekend through uh jill but other yeah than he said mm -hmm. <laughs> What's the question? The parts you remember. <laughs> what was your yeah, <laughs> yeah? Um, weekend, Frankie. My weekend. So it started yesterday, I guess. When when does your weekend start? The Friday or is it Friday? Friday. Night. The second I leave work. Friday the second night, you leave yeah. work. Okay, so like five p.m. Friday. Um, let's see. What did I do Friday? <laughs> oh, I yeah, I do remember. I don't. I do. I do. I remember. Um, I was. I had to edit all day Friday for the rundown. Mm. So that was fantastic. And then Saturday. What did I do Saturday? What did I do tomorrow? Yesterday? Tomorrow? tomorrow? Yesterday. Oh my God. Did I go to work yesterday? Did my you other work job. before? I think I did. Yes, I did. I did. Proud of you. That's right. I did go to work. And then after that, I had to hurry up and go to uh, this other place right away. <laughs> So wow, uh, yeah, riveting Speaking stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I had to go to a, a dwelling of sorts, and there was a, a gathering of people of sorts. And uh, Jill, 
was there. And uh, and then after that, <laughs> please, remember. please don't tell me. I like did for, did you That's... guys do anything? At, we left at like twelve thirty. You guys did anything after that? Y'all are crazy. No, we. What did we do? What did we do? What did we do? What did we do? We uh. What did we do? Yeah, that's the, that's the <laughs> night we had. That's the night we oh, had. Last oh, night. we went to the store to get um, chocolate milk, and we went All back and got chocolate, chocolate milk wasted. Milk. Yeah, and we got chocolate <laughs> milk wasted later. Oh, All I right. think oh, yeah. I think right. Sean was a part of that chocolate milk run. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, we all got. I like. I love a nice glass of chocolate milk oh. on a Saturday night. Oh yeah, it's the best. <laughs> That's what I'm drinking right now. <laughs> uh, well, we'll try not to speak in hieroglyphics for the rest of the show, everybody. I promise. I promise. But uh, <laughs> no we, we have we have quite a bit to talk about. Obviously, um, season nine is officially here. We got an absolute monster of a pay per view that began this entire season that we'll be seeing for the rest of the year, and we're gonna be talking about it all. So again, spoilers are coming if you have not watched it. Uh, we will be revealing everything, and uh, it's up to you whether or not you want to stay. And we're going to go in chronological order, so we're going to talk about the scenes, we're going to talk about the studio, we're going to talk about the matches and everything in between. And the first thing that did drop on the pay-per-view was uh, kind of the closure of the Shmominati. It was teased uh, late last year before Spectacular, and we see a cut scene with Grace, the Shmominati, and Christian Harloff, and it is revealed that Sam Levine has been working as the Shmominati this entire time, and he's ending it to officially return as a player this year. Uh, he will be returning to play with who and for who. That is still up in the air. He may be a rogue. We don't know. Uh, but the Inglorious one is officially back in trivia, everybody. Uh, thoughts on the Shmominati, on Sam, the whole scene, everything like that. Jill, why don't you start us off? I mean, I Sam was the last person I think would I would expect to be the Shmominati, but I think that's what made it so good. Um, so that was really a lot of fun. That entire scene with him and uh, Grace was really great. Uh, it was nice to see Harloff finally say the words, Grace, you're fired. Uh, so, <laughs> you know, he was waiting to say that for a really long time. Very curious to see what's going to happen with Grace, because you, I can't imagine that's going to be the last we see of her. Right. Um, but... I'm the retirement, like he announces retirement and then he comes back, but I'm not at all surprised he's competing again because we all see him as he was managing last season. We'd all see him in the back of his players and you could tell that he knew like 98% mm -hmm. of the answers to all these questions. So I feel like he was kind of itching to come back, but like not really <clears throat> ready to come back. And so to see him actually coming back is going to be a lot of fun. I think he's going to be really scary. Um, I, I I wouldn't want to be. I think he gets he gets a number one contender match right off the bat. Yeah. Well, he retired with both belts. You heard the man. Mm -hmm. I mean, he did. It's he good. Did. I mean, it's good. It's a good argument. I, it's, I mean, that's a pretty. <laughs> I I can't argue against it. I mean, he's a legend, so might as well give him what he's due. Give him that number one contender match. So I, I'm glad he's back. It's fun. I'm kind of. I am kind of bummed we're not going to get Shmominati anymore because I thought that was really fun. Uh, it couldn't last line. forever. Get it out of here. I, I liked it though. <laughs> yeah, but we I barely it. got it. We barely got it. I wanted more. Well, I'll say real quick. I don't know that that means the end of Shmominati because I kind of, I've always likened the Shmominati to anonymous, right? Where yeah, it's not yeah. just, it can, you know, anyone can put on the it's mask. Like ghost right? <laughs> yeah. So I still think there's potential, or a, there's a possibility that. It could, it could come back in some other form. Maybe even mess with Sam. I don't know. Uh, this is me just spitballing like what could what do you, like, what do you happen. know, Frankie? Like, yeah. <laughs> Honestly, I really don't know anything besides what happened uh, last night outside yeah. of storyline-wise. So this all this other stuff, like the Sam thing, um, was it always Sam as the Shmominati? Um I don't think so, but... Ooh. Okay. Um, good. Give me more. But I think, it, but it works. But it, but it works for bringing Sam back into the fold this way. And hundred uh, percent. It's a fun way to bring him back into, into the show as opposed to, hey guys, I'm back. And we'd be like, yeah. oh, that's awesome. At least this plays into more of the the fun aspect of the showdown and the storylines and all that stuff. And can I just say how absolutely freaking thrilled I am that storylines are back? <laughs> like. I don't know about you guys, but I we got a lot I, of them too. We we, I, we get we're getting a lot right off the bat, and I don't know. Like I I always make fun of myself. I'm like, yeah, I don't watch movies, but I'm very involved in a movie trivia league. But I don't watch movies. I maybe know like 
two percent of the answers to like the regular singles in questions so for me the storyline is what always like really kept me like really invested so i'm really glad that storylines are coming back because i freaking miss those yeah so well glad I mean, they're back. we've heard from christian this entire off season that they the last two years have been 80 percent sport 20 percent entertainment now he's yeah. going flip side 80 percent entertainment 20 percent sport and that's what the showdown's always been it's always been storyline. yeah Storylines have always taken a huge precedence in what this is all together. Um, and mm -hmm. you can tell that Christian, now that he's like fully back in the fold of everything, he's just yeah. like, I'm I'm putting I'm putting strings everywhere. And I, that's he's Charlie Day with that whiteboard where he's going crazy. <laughs> he's right? he's got it. He's got it. That's exactly that's, what he's doing. And that's because like, there was of course with any it's like Star Wars. People are just gonna complain for the sake of complaining, <laughs> you know. Um, and I saw a lot of people like, oh, so we're only going to get two matches a week. And I'm like, that's how it was. Mm -hmm. We would get like one singles match and Thank one God. teams, maybe an IG match every three weeks. And then a Star Wars match every three months. Like, that's how yeah. it was. That's how it was when a lot of the fans first started watching. And if you kept watching with just those two matches a week, you're going to keep watching. Especially with, the, uh, which we'll talk about later with the Friday Night Titans and how that's all going to go down. I'm so if if the rest of the season is like this pay per view, I am freaking yeah stoked. Quality over quantity. Yes, Hundo. exactly. It seems like it's what it's being set up as. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think last year with the volume of matches we got, I think the quality of the match of the players of the play was exquisite, right? Top notch, best we've ever seen. But that's all. That's all. It. That's all it was. Was just you know watching people answer questions, which is. There's entertainment value in that, sure, but the Schmodown has always been more than that. Has always strived to be more than that, and I think you clearly saw that last night with, you know, the Schmodown scene with the Kev uh, Kaiser Roxy scene. You know, the other scenes. You know, to end the night. So that's you know, and then that plays into setting up matches and things like that, and and, and that's fun. And I know people are worried about some people are worried about losing the sport aspect of it, but you know, I think. There's always going to be an inherent level of sport when it's, you know, like Kevin and Chandra. I mean, like, that's a very, that was a very tense match. And even though I think the events or scenes surrounding that made it seem a little less so to people, um, it's still as intense as ever. It's still, you know, Chandra wanted to win just as badly as, as Kevin wanted to win. So I think, um, you know, there's a different angle on the sport aspect of of Schmodown as opposed to you know the faction system and all that it's just a different look at the sport aspect that the Schmodown is trying to implement this year and it's you know for some people out there that's unfortunate for them to hear this but you know i'm sorry like we're, we're evolving as roxy said last night <laughs> I, der I derailed the Sam conversation. I apologize. <laughs> oh, no, you're fine. You're, you're, no, I mean, you're yeah, fine. I mean, it's all it's all like encompassing, you know. Really, yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. Uh, but Brian, Molly, what did you think about the Sam Sam reveal and him being the Shmominati? I mean, we we know why he's been so busy. <laughs> he's been running yeah. the whole Shmominati, apparently. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, I felt like something was off when he released his announcement of like retiring from the Shmodown. Like something just felt off and now we know why. It makes perfect sense. Um, but I'm excited to see him come back and play again. I'm interested to see what uh, the rest of like the usual suspects think of all of this. Yeah. Like I want to know what yeah. some of these players think. Um, well, we have one in the chat. Thing. We got Amaru uh, in the Amaru, chat. What do you what do you think? Yeah. What are your no, that's a swag. No, that's a swag. That's a swag, dude. That's He's on swag right. now, well, but, but yeah. because yeah. because <laughs> Usual Suspects yeah. was disbanded. So what are your thoughts, Rue? <laughs> I'm just curious. I think the thing that first came to mind is who's going to eventually be the Damn first you, person <laughs> he plays against and will it be a suspect? Well, so Ooh. I saw some people saying in the chat in the – uh, obviously speculation of it already happening is that last week we got the news that Griffin Ooms is going to be focusing on teams and so Barbarian's getting a number one contender shot and it almost seems like it's fitting for Sam to play the Barbarian. It's not official right? but they both have number one contender shots Yeah, and it's not like you're going to have two number one contender matches right away. It would make sense for them to play each other. 
So I mean, he could be playing the barbarian. Yeah. It certainly seems like that, yeah. given the Twitter announcement and what Sam said in yeah. that announcement. So, right, it's not confirmed, but Barbarian Levine seems like that could more than likely happen if that, in fact, you know, is the number one contender match based on what we based on what we've seen and heard. So yeah, I think for me, I just think about it's kind of cool that like someone like Paige, Paige knows all his study tricks probably and she knows all her study tricks yeah. probably so it's literally just going to be a battle of wits mm. on that type of front and so. and she's another one where we don't know where she's going yet we don't know if she's gonna be a rogue we don't know if she's gonna be in a faction so it's it's gonna be interesting to see those undrafted suspect players i mean we don't we don't know where any of them are except for Nikki. except for and Rue. And Rue, and Rue, and Rue mm-hmm. excuse me, yeah. Because only a, only a extension to Liz Shannon Miller for Koi has been sent, but she hasn't accepted or denied. Yeah. Um. So Ethan and Liz are still on the table. Paige, like, there's a lot of them still available that could play Sam, like Brian's saying, which would be very interesting. Ethan versus Sam would be crazy. Oh, my God. God. Oh, oh God. Especially would... with him, with Sam managing Ethan to get the belt and yeah. then for them to go against each other. That would yeah. be fire that'd be yeah. really freaking cool it'd be crazy um okay so the next thing that did happen in the pay-per-view after we got a really really cool promo looking back at season eight uh which was cut together brilliantly it was super cool uh was the cut scene with the wild berries and claudia dolphin video drew uh with the mannequins and the t-shirt sales and the return of the wild berries officially just a, a fun price gag. deals yeah <laughs> we, love a, we love a full price deal yeah it's so, great. <laughs> so great but it's just it's so fun to see them back Josh and Elliot together, um, you know, free of the corruption hold for Dewberry, uh, the full Wildberry way. And then all of a sudden you see Claudia Dolph and Video Drew pop up and scare the living hell out of them. My favorite part of the entire thing was Josh trying to put the mannequin back together. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely yeah. Like, the entire yeah. time you could see him try to put the arms on, the waist fell off, and then magically it just ended up back together as they left the building. So, uh, <laughs> and I saw a preview to the match. It's new, new Tom. It's yeah, new new Tom. There you go. New new Tom. <laughs> I want to know if anyone was right on the number of scares because I think it was way more than any of us predicted. I, I said a lot. I did say it was. And he a touched lot. the doll a few times. Like he did. <laughs> and then I think he did it unintentionally screen. too, a couple of times. <laughs> Does her doll have like magnetic, different mm-hmm. magnetic faces? It's like a Velcro. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. Velcro. You could put different faces on it. It's great. Now that was just like dark magic that held it on. That yeah. definitely, yeah, yeah. Sure. Velcro that is dark magic. Velcro <laughs> is dark magic. <laughs> we don't know how it works, but it works. <laughs> wild, wild cherries, yes, yes. Wild, yeah, cherries. wild cherries. Wild cherries. <laughs> we need a variant T-shirt. That's what we need. The wild cherries. We do. We do. Brian, Brian Ward, I see you're in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so yeah, look, uh, before we get to the actual match between these two teams, um, I wanted to talk about the studio itself. And I know that <gasps> you two have gotten looks at it for a while now. You've kind of been sitting on how it's looked, what the feel is like, but we got a full official look at the desk with Andrew Guy and Mark Ellis to start this off, and then the playing ground on how the setup is going to be with the desks, uh, the dividers in between rounds and everything, standing, um, the color scheme. Uh, I don't know about everyone else, and I know Twitter, some people were pretty much blowing up about it, but I think it looks absolutely beautiful and like what I imagine a Schmodown studio should look like. Yeah. Like it's clean, it's crisp, it's like very modern with the color schemes going on. Uh I, I thought it, I think it's brilliant. I think it looks so good. I love it. I do I, like it. I feel I do kind of <clears throat> miss though like the personal touches in some of the older studios, like the framed pictures and like the knickknacks and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I get that they want kind of a clean, fresh start for a reboot. Makes sense. It's, it's more professional. There you go. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I just want to know, whoever is editing these, how happy are, that they, happy are they that they don't have to use, do the scoreboard anymore? Because <laughs> there's an actual one there. Well, yeah. there are at times. Well, yeah, but for the most part, it's literally just on the yeah. fucking yeah. stand. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I, was, I was talking to Mark Ellis about it for a little bit, and I was like, I love this color scheme. A, I would totally buy merch with this color scheme because I think the color scheme is gorgeous. Mm. I love the color scheme for what they the, what they chose for a reboot because it's it's like old school. Like I love it. I think it's great. Um, 
But every time, I don't know if it's a Pavlov thing, but every time I see anything from the studio, I get a super craving for a Baja Blast. Yeah. <laughs> um, and That's I was fair. telling Mark, and, and I was like- you already like, have cravings for those. And I always have cravings, but I was telling Ellis, I was like, we need to get like Taco Bell in here. Cause th- this, I like need a taco right now. I need we a need, Baja Blast. We need to have the Baja Blast Studios. <laughs> the Baja Blast Studios. We need to have that. But he and then he was saying that it looked like um uh like a basketball team like there's a basketball Spurs, team that has yeah. the Spurs thank you they From do the like 90s. a retro uniform and he was like oh it looks like the Spurs and, but I love it I ad- adored I literally like my jaw dropped with everything it's just it's gorgeous it's so pretty it looks like a Twitch overlay almost that uh, <laughs> that I'm pretty sure I've seen somewhere but just like the colors and everything it also gives me Double Dare vibes I don't know it's something <laughs> about Something about not like against the, it. Not against it. The furniture that's in there, they look like they're like all these little cubes. They have those on, on the double dare. I mean, it it, it does stuff, look like they're I trying think. to go for the television game show vibe, and yeah, you know, they definitely nailed it. Like it, yeah. it looks so good. They need buzz- we need buzzers. Just just cause. Just have <laughs> just cause. Just to have them in there. I, I just love that I, I love that the option of standing uh, and it's standing only is a, is a great choice because as we saw in the first match, the utilization of the studio from the players is brilliant. Yeah. And specifically Makuga, obviously, who's just running back and forth everywhere. <laughs> He's using it like as it should do. be, but it's giving it's giving that old school Schmodown vibe mm-hmm. to the game again. And that's exactly what it seems like it, it's going for, obviously. But I wanted to ask for Frank and Jill, because you guys have actually been there in person. What does it feel like? Like, it, it, does it feel like it should? Does it feel like it like the old studio? But does it feel better? Like, what does it it's, feel like when you walk in the room? It's a combination mm-hmm. of, I, I can't speak for Frankie, but for me, it's definitely, it has the vibe of the old studio, but to like the 10,000th degree, like times 10,000. Like, it, it felt like I was on a legit, television set like oh hey drew Mm -hmm. um it was it was um it literally felt like i was on a television set like cameras everywhere on all different angles like people running around the also shout out to everybody behind the scenes for this thing because there were people running around like headless chickens (laughs) it was they they worked their butts off and it looked so great but that's the yeah it it really felt like you were stepping into a real life television studio well and there's there's essentially three sets right the desk the playing room and then that side it's all in it's all in one the desk uh no the the i frank's already done (laughs) frankie's not again not again frankie we're not gonna talk about that joe Okay. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> anyway, um, but yeah, so it's, it's like it's like how it was at the old studio, where it's the desk is literally right in front of the uh, where the competitors are, but it's the camera. It's it's essentially two. It looks like two different sets, but it's all it's it's how they do it. Honestly, really the the setup is is very similar to how it was in Collider, with just more space. Yes. Um, yes. It's very much the same in in kind of its layout, but. I think, um, yeah, with with players, competitors standing, um, it's just like any other game show you see on TV. You know, with Jeopardy, Wheel of Fortune, Family Feud. Um, you know, it's not it's not you know, who wants to be a millionaire where you sit down in a chair and you're one on one. But um, so I do I do like that that aspect of players being able to be a little bit mobile and and have a little more energy and a little there's more dynamics with that. Um, and so I think you clearly saw Makuga take full advantage of the <laughs> playground uh, that is the Schmodown set. And so uh, it was great to to watch players, you know, um, really live in that space and, and, and work in it. And so I think the other aspect of does it feel like Collider? Yes and no, but the only reason why it might feel similar is because of all the people that are there. That's I mean, that's really where it comes from is all the people there – working together to put on a show uh, and having fun. Uh, the set looks amazing, and, and, and that studio was built you know, to be shot, to shoot, stuff like this. And um, I just think it was, it was great to be back 
under a roof with everyone making this show and putting on a show. And um, that's what the Schmodown is. It's a show. And I know people are like, I want the sports back. But the trivia is still there. It's yeah. The trivia will be as competitive as ever. It's just now that we're in studio, in person, it's going to be a show. Like mm-hmm. um, a real legitimate looking game show. And that's what I'm really excited about this year for the Schmodown is the quality that not only the the set provides, but the talent, everyone involved and and everyone feeds off the atmosphere. And it goes along with, you know, how do you feel in the set and in the stage and all that. So it helps. It all feeds off one another. And I think um, that first shoot weekend was great. And I'm really looking forward to this year, more so than I have ever looked forward to any season. And that's, yeah, that's because we had two years of pandemic digital era stuff and now we're back to doing what we used to do, but on a, on a, on a, on a completely different level, especially with the, with Skybound behind us now, it it just feels like we can do anything we want to do. Um, and and that's a great feeling. I feel like this is, uh, I feel like this is what Harloff has always wanted it to be. Yeah, is what we're so. going to be getting this season. It's pretty much when he came up with Schmodown, this is what he wanted it to look like, but it, it couldn't really come completely to fruition. And now we are officially getting that. And I, I, I kind of think that's really how it is. And it's I think this season is going to be, like I said, if it's anything like this pay-per-view, whoo. Well, there's just more energy. You can just tell yeah. there's a little bit of a different energy now that it is back in studio. Um, even when people talk about it online and, and how excited there was, obviously there was excitement over the last couple of years, but, um, being able to walk inside and I'm sure, cause I've actually never been there, but being able to walk inside a room and seeing all those competitors who are lining up, getting ready to play or, you know, Andrew and, and marketing ready to go up on the desk or, um, anybody behind the scenes who's running around working, like Jill was saying, mm-hmm. there's just a better energy now that it's all in one place. You're doing it in person, like it should be done and was doing before the pandemic obviously hit. So. Um, and it shows through the screen and people are very excited about it. everyone in the chat seems to be loving it. They're very excited for where this is all going. Um, and it was a great way to start it all. Like it just, it felt right. Just felt like we were, it's that, it's that Han Solo line. We're home. Like we just, it, Oh, a hundred percent. One hundred percent. Uh, all right, let's get into the matches here. Let's start with this first match. We have the wild berries taking on video drew and Claudia Dolph. Um, we and see this you in, was... we see you in the chat video, Claudia. Claudia Drew. Oh, what are we, calling... Claudia... <laughs> what are we oh. calling you two? Video Claudia Dolph. Drew. Video. video Dolph. Claudia. Video Dolph. <laughs> like video, video Drew. Video Drew and Claudia. In the chat, she said, "No, the Tom. The Tom is Claudia. The doll is the doll. doll. So <laughs> the doll is doll. Some, some okay. clarification there. <laughs> Got it. Thank you, Video Drew. One word. Um, Remember, it's one but... word, guys." So obviously, when you see the wild berries on a card, you're you're, you're thinking to yourself, okay, this is going to be fun. This is going to be exciting. It's going to be a frat boy party on the Schmodown stage. Elliot and Makuka showed up. They sh- yeah. they showed up. Uh, obviously, they they walk away with the victory here. And, and Claudia and, and Video Drew, it's the first time playing together, but they played very well. Mm-hmm. Came down to the wire on the very last question, that five pointer for for the ladies. Um, but what a great! I mean, look, the match had everything we wanted. And the pay per view in general, but we got a wild card slice. We got a wild card slice down. spun by freaking Josh and, McCoo. And it was the, it was like the best <laughs> slice possible. For that was Makuga such a Gary. cool <laughs> category. The yes. the what was it? Die Hard and Blank. Die Hard, Die hard on a blank. blank. It was perfect. on a blank. Yeah. I, I had to get Alex to explain it to me. me too. And then once I realized what it I was, was like, I was like, oh, this I was is like, great. Wait, I literally had to be like, I don't understand what this means. <laughs> Please, someone explain it to me. It's so good, though. I, I was it. there, too. Yeah. But what? yeah, <laughs> once I realized what was happening, I was like, this is a fantastic category. So round well, of applause for yeah. the question writers on that one. Yeah, it was fun. Especially for Wild Bears to get that category. I mean, you just really... I mean, yeah, okay, look, we rigged it, okay? So I was happened. okay, I was gonna say so I was gonna say you couldn't have you couldn't have written it better. Cause yeah. like there was a Pittsburgh have. question. Yeah, I mean <laughs> that, that moment was so good. That was so good. It was. <laughs> he got so excited to talk about that Van Damme movie. And honestly, <laughs> I don't know that anyone I don't know that anyone else could have answered that question correctly yeah. besides Makuga. I mean, maybe a couple, no. but there's really no one in, in that studio no. who's going to answer that question. 
What I love that even afterwards he had to continue on with the story, the next question, and explain the scene to everybody. (laughs) He's like, I gotta get this. He's actually ever seen the movie. (laughs) He knows that. Yeah, it was great. It was great. Uh, I mean, I I was impressed by Makuga a couple times. They were like lightning fast answers, and I was like, Well, he got he got the didn't Makuga get the five pointer like immediately. Uh, if I remember in Kek- yeah. Kek- I think he Oh yeah, pretty much the yeah. Yeah, danger. Yeah, pretty much yeah. Yeah. close. Yeah. Yeah. I was impressed. I was impressed. I was I will be more <laughs> I will be honest, I was more impressed by what the ladies did though. They yeah. were they I win. really hope we get to see them again as a team because I thought they were so much fun. Um I also want to give a shout out to uh my ladies who are obviously theater people for the two four six oh one joke. Uh high fives. Chris, we we love a Les Mis joke. We love it. We love it. Um, I adored them together. I think they were really fun to watch. Video Drew is always fun to watch. I love Claudia. I need to see more of her, and I'm glad we got to see her in the very first match of the season. Um, I really hope we get more of them. I know they didn't win the match, but they almost had it, and they were entertaining as heck. Um, Especially the Liam Neeson the, yeah. And they kept oh. it going for the rest of the match. <laughs> the it was accents. It was Mark, Mark kept saying, "Okay, we're keep we're keeping the accents. Yeah. We're I keeping guess. the Sorry. accents, Mark. Get used to it. It's sticking. We're uh, it was great. I really hope we get to see them as a team again. There, there are awesome. there are very few people who can team with Video Drew very well and be <laughs> able to banter with her um, because she's obviously like she has a very different style of personality compared to a lot of players. But Claudia meshes very well with her. Yes. You can tell that she's having fun, that they're they're doing it well together. The back and forth is great. Um, I hope that they stay together, whether it's as a rogue or as a team together. Um, I would love to see them a rogue you know, team. together. A rogue think, team. A, a rogue team, yeah. I mean, but uh it's the first match of the season. For them to separate after the first match would almost be like, you know, that we have be disappointing. You know? yeah. I don't. I need to see them again. I need to. I. I also. I loved when Claudia would like brush the doll's hair and like just wouldn't yeah. even question when Video <laughs> Drew was like not there and it was just the doll. She was just like, oh, yep, this is my partner. She's a doll. Like just not even blinking an eye. Like it was. It was great. It was great. I loved it. <laughs> need more. Need more of it. Uh, on the flip side, Wildberries there. They get. A t- they get a title shot. Right. They're going straight to the belts. They, already, that, they got the that, belts, yeah. Is that they, how that works? Yeah. They got the belts already. Yeah, it's they crunch. stole them off of the uh, yeah. mannequins. Yeah. <laughs> right. Got it. Got well, it. Brandon was there it's at a... the end. He probably took it when did he wasn't looking. Did he floss with it again? Or... <laughs> hey, I'm Liam Neeson. I am Liam Neeson, Governor. <laughs> <laughs> perfect look, look, Liam Neeson. As, as much of, a, as much of a, a, a fun time the Wild Berries are, they are one and zero at the moment. Like I know that the game, yeah. you know, it, it was in their favor a little bit. They got a great category in round two, um, but they are one and zero. Maybe this is a new version of the Wildberries that could steamroll a bunch of teams. No, I feel like if, the, no. if, if they draw, if they draw no. another, no. Like, I'm with they, Frank yeah. on this one. <laughs> Frank's like, nah, yeah, I think Unless maybe if they all keep, the categories are Pittsburgh. I don't know. Right, yeah. exactly. If it's all Pittsburgh questions, and they keep drawing wild card die hard questions. Yeah. Maybe he then literally they, said right before. Die Hard's like one of my favorite movies. Literally. And then there's a Die Hard wheel. And it's like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I think then uh, in this match in particular, it's a perfect example of a team getting so much momentum and having such a good time while they're playing. You could just see it in their faces and then their performance. Like they just got better and better yeah. as it went on. They They were really riding the momentum well. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if anybody caught that, but they're Dewberry. I did. I was. Uh, you know, Can I tell you something? I, At, yes, when uh, when we were shooting that match, I didn't even know that was ha- I didn't know that happened <laughs> until I watched the match. When Dewberry went in the back, yeah, I didn't I didn't know he did that until I was watching it yesterday. I was like, he did that? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, because he was like he was standing right back the there, he was standing yeah. back there, just like answer the question. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's the it's it's what's great about the studio is that players can do that now. Like, mm-hmm. Well, I don't know. I, I think the uh, wild they cannot, berries because can, they said yeah. no cross talk on one of them and. 
I would have a hard time believing that if we're taking I, this very seriously, we're going to let people stand behind them. I think well, the wild, the wild berries, berries can, can get away rule. with it. They live yeah. on a different rule. Yeah, That's the wild saying. berries can get away with it. It nope. was just adorable yeah. seeing the wild berries attempt uh, a prank or a scare for, for them specifically. <laughs> it just like went totally wrong. <laughs> I just like uh, when Video Drew would go, oh, we were married. No, we were not. No, we, were <laughs> no, we weren't. <laughs> right. Um, well, yeah, we'll we'll wait to see what happens with Video Drew and Claudia Dolph, and then the Wild Berries, of course, being one and zero. We're gonna move on uh, to the uh, intermission, if you will, because there's a couple big things that did happen in between these matches. And the first one is the big announcement of what the Schmodown is gonna be doing going forward this year and possibly beyond. Um, we will not be getting matches on Tuesdays, Thursdays, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, like we have on the previous two years. They will be on what is called Friday Night Titans. And Friday Night Titans will be a two-match pay-per-view uh, event every single Friday. Um, but instead of it being a pay-per-view style, it is just going to be the matches, very similar to how this went down. Um, and Schmodown will now live on Friday evenings going forward, 4 p.m. Pacific. Um, thoughts? I mean, let's open the conversation because this is obviously a big, big deal going forward for Schmodown. It's a change of landscape for everything that has happened over the last couple of years. I'm so stoked. I love the name. I do too. It sounds Friday like Night Titans. It sounds like like a well. Remember that I, I saw it in the live chat too. All of y'all here remember the Titans nonsense. Yeah. We get it. <laughs> well, I don't think Friday Night Blue Fairies would have sounded. Yeah, that way. doesn't have the <laughs> correct ring to it. The the Friday Night Tyrannoceratops. Yeah, that's that, that doesn't really have a great. Ring. I would have been fine with tongue. that one. Rolls off the tongue. Um, I'm I like I said with. With the storylines coming back and everything, I I love that it's going to be a combination of the storylines, the matches that we're not going to know who's going to be competing. I love mm -hmm. that aspect of it because literally anything can happen. And I and obviously yes, you're going to know some matches. Like example, how we know about the Brendan Meyer and uh, JTE right. that they did announce during the pay per view. So there's going to be some matches that you are going to know what's going to be happening, but. What else is going to be going on during that? It it very feels it feels like a WWE Raw kind of thing. It does where like because you don't you they don't give you they're like here's the schedule on today's Raw. They don't do that. Matches just happen and you don't know what it's going to be. And I I love it. I love this announcement. I think it's going to be so much fun. Love the name. Mm -hmm. I love how it looks. I'm I'm thrilled. And it's nice that it's on one night because mm -hmm. your girl your girl's busy. So it's nice, <laughs> it's nice that it's all just going to be on one night and it's it's like a it's like it's like my Sunday night football except yeah. movie trivia. Yeah. And it Friday does night. feel a lot more kind of wrestling-esque to me. Mm -hmm. Uh and it it just like paves the way for a lot of like we've been talking about storylines to to flourish with this kind of setup. Uh and yeah, that that anything could happen and Anyone can challenge anyone, which is very exciting. Yeah, I think it's it's going to feel much more episodic uh, with this new format going forward. What we saw last night, you know, starting off with a scene, we have a match, then we have another announcement or a scene, and then we go back into a match, and then we end it with another scene. And it's, you know, very episodic television in that sense, you know, it's modeled after a SmackDown or Raw, you know, what have you. And you're right, you know, those programs don't, necessarily tell you who's playing or who's playing all that night right you know so and that's not always gonna be the case either with the showdown or friday night titans like Jill brought up you know hey look we have um uh jte and brendan meyer right we know they're playing but we don't at the moment know who the undercard is and this idea of you know you have to tune in to figure out who's to find out who's going to play it, there's there's like, yes, that's partly true because while we know one half, we don't know the other half. So you, you do have to tune in to kind of find out who's going to be playing the undercard, right? Uh, if you want to be like, well, I know it's a two-hour event, so I'll just hop in the second hour and I'll watch JT and Brendan Meyer. And then, you know, you go, oh, who played earlier? You know, so, I mean, there's no, like, set schedule. And I think it also allows for – and because, look, I think – if they need to move a match around because of scheduling and things like that, you know, a lot of players 
might not be available for certain things and there's some out of state players. So I think it also leads to some maneuverability if it needs to happen for production to be like, well, all right, well, we were going to air this next week, what, but we got to move it to here. And so I think it allows for a little more flexibility. And um, I think that that's helpful for the production crew and post production. You know, yeah. to be because last year they were really under the gun, delivering five, six, sometimes seven matches. Oh, yeah, it was overload. Which is just brutal, right? Yeah. And so, I think when you bring it down to two or three matches a week, you know, the crew can really hone in on producing a quality product <laughs> and and you know dotting those eyes, crossing those T's. And I, I love that people want to see more matches, but at the same time, you know, we want to produce. You know, quality matches. Like Molly said, put, quality put over together. quantity. Yes, a hundred percent that. Yeah, yeah. It's it it's it's exciting for multiple reasons, but also you can build up to what is going to be happening on Friday, right? With yeah. promos or uh, interviews, whatever it may be. You have all week to do that. It's not, you know, like for last year, for example, right? If a Patreon match drops on Monday, it's dropping on Wednesday. You don't have much time to build up to it like you could like an entertainment value product. Yeah. Um, and now you have that ability with just Friday matches. And I know, I think it was Stylin and Moose had asked in the chat, are they all going to be pay-per-view? No. No. Uh, they're no. just matches. They're dropped at 4 o'clock on Friday on the public channel. Um, One pay-per-view will... per month, yeah. One pay-per-view. Yeah, there will still be pay-per-views per month, which was announced uh, earlier today, which we can get to uh, as well. Um so yeah, they're just going to be regular matches like we've seen in the past, but instead of it being released on Tuesdays or Thursdays, they are now going to be back-to-back -back two matches on Fridays at four. Uh, another big note about that is that the matches that are released on Friday will be released separately the following week on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um, and there's a couple people in the chat asking us about our reactions and reactors in general. That's where our reactions will come into play, is on the replays. We won't be doing them on Friday nights. Um, and so we'll be doing reactions to matches the following week when they're released separately on the channel. Uh, but that is a discussion for another time. So um, as far as the concept goes, I, th I think it's brilliant. It we, yeah. we know that Christian's a huge wrestling fan and that a lot of this was built around the concept of wrestling and the characters and stuff. And now it's come full circle. Um, and after now seeing the product and what it looks like and feels like from yesterday's uh, event, it feels like it, it's this is what the Shmodown has always supposed was always supposed to be from the very beginning. It took a long time to get here, obviously, and and bumps and bruises and stuff, but uh, it just feels exactly like what the Shmodown is supposed to be to thrive at its highest. Uh, and I'm very excited to see it because we haven't gotten a, a Friday Night Titans event just yet. Um, and so I'm I'm super excited to see how it plays out and, and everyone in the chat watching at four o'clock on Friday evenings or or afterwards. If, what if a, what a way to kick off your weekend. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah. Love it. Get off work, put on some Schmodown. You know, you got down. Friday Night Titans, and then you got Saturday Schmodown Rundown. I mean, you got everything you need. <laughs> you, got, you, got, you got happy hour thrown in there every month, yeah. you know. We got, we got you. got our, our show on Sundays. It's, we got, we got the your The whole weekend covered. We have your weekends covered. Exactly. Friday <laughs> Night Titans, go. Saturday Schmodown Rundown. That's it. That's all you need. Uh, okay. <laughs> Who invited Frankie Janish to the show? Like, can we not, please? Listen. People have things to do on Saturdays. <laughs> Yeah, people have yeah. things to do on Saturdays. Sunday mm -hmm. is the stay home and chill day, which is why they watch us. Like I said, we have everything. Friday night nights, <laughs> Saturday show down, run down, everything you need right there. <laughs> um, oh, all right, so God. two super chats real quick have come from Tim Sim. I want to get to these Tim. real quick. Uh, and he says, I assume everyone knows why they named it Titans, right? From the one particular ongoing joke here. In we are the Titans. I mean, we that's not true, but titans. you can think that. <laughs> mighty, mighty I mean, it, it works, but it's not. That's not the case. That's not yeah. the case. Yeah. But rumor it, it, train. It, it, Hello, it where are you? Those... <laughs> yeah, choo choo. <laughs> it can be one of those fan theories. Um, and the next one from Tim here is what I hope to see this year: FCL every Tuesday on Twitch when they hopefully return, and Titans every Friday night for Optimum Schmodown. And that would be very reminiscent of a SmackDown and a WWE Raw. Yeah. So to all my wrestling people out there. So I I hope that is the case if they when, whenever FCL comes back. Yeah, we is. haven't heard any FCL news, have we? Not as of right now. Uh -uh. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Hopefully uh, Tuesdays. And Brian Ward, I could finally retire with Photoshops now if the matches aren't announced ahead of time. Absolutely not. <laughs> He's going to know. He's going to know. That, that's not how that works. <laughs> that's no. You are forever chained to that fence. Uh, <laughs> that's not how that works. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry, Ward. <laughs> uh, real quick, clarification, because I see, I think Andy was asking in the chat, when a pay-per-view does come, the pay-per-view will be replacing Titans. Is that correct? I I believe no. no. They're gonna okay. be so we're gonna have four matches that weekend. Um, no, I oh oh we're, oh, we're replacing. So, so like, instead of a Friday night Titans, Titans, the pay-per-view Titans or is the pay per view Titans or pay per view is Titans. Yeah, well, the pay per view be Titans. I'm pretty sure Harloff answered this in the Q and A or in the live chat. Okay. Yeah, honestly, I I can't recall. I mean, like three three of the Fridays will be Friday night Titans, and then one of those. Fridays will be so I would I would imagine in the night of pay per views we won't have okay PJ says in the chat I believe Christian said that Titans becomes the okay that, that makes sense that makes sense yeah. okay yeah. if if sense. if we need to be corrected Christian you know how to contact yeah. us yeah. <laughs> so we can uh, correct that uh, the reason why I wanted to bring it up because the next pay per view was officially announced um, which is going to be happening on March 25th the final Friday uh, of March and. The undercard will be Chance Ellison versus William Bibiani 2. And then the main card is Marisol defending her title. Oh, my God. Uh, What? Uh, Just uh, fight out. There's no no name of who. We don't know who. We have a number one contenders match. We don't know who who she's going to be playing. So um, that will be the pay-per-view for March. Uh, My girl is keeping that belt through the entire week. We we have a long way to go. (laughs) But, uh, yeah, that is the pay-per-view. That is the next pay-per-view we'll get. Uh, and so Andy and everyone, anyone else who is asking, hopefully that answers your question. So essentially three Titans a month plus a pay-per-view is what we are uh, hearing here. So, uh, and, and yeah, like Jill said, Christian, just correct us if we are wrong. So, um, all right. Next thing that happened, intermission before correct the big Frank. Yeah, we're, we're not wrong. Just correct Frank. Yeah, just, yeah. <laughs> correct Frank. Yeah. yeah. Friday Night Titans, Saturday Show on Rundown. That's all <laughs> <we need. laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so the next piece that did happen before we get to the match was um, a nice little cutscene between Kaiser, or not, I guess not together, but Kaiser and Kevin Smets. And then once Kaiser left, Roxy Stryer stepped in with Kev, uh, and they had a nice little conversation together before the big match, um, just setting up Smets' return, obviously. Sneak uh, snake. And, and a nice little, again, <laughs> little, nice, little, yeah. nice little build to what came next, uh, which we can trans- transition into. Um, the beginning of the match after the competitors walked out, Smets with Kaiser and then Chundra by himself as as Loki, which he looked great as Loki. President. Um, President, President Loki. Uh, Chundra made a statement that he is actually playing for someone. He actually has a manager. He's not going rogue. And lo and behold, walks out one Roxy Stryer. Uh, and Chundra Dandapani is officially a star. Uh, he is officially a star at the moment playing for Roxy. Um, and obviously that created a big, big reaction from Kevin uh, because not just that cutscene, but also over the last year or so, uh, it seems like Roxy has very much been for him or been there for him uh, through a lot. So obviously tensions are high before the trivia even started here. Thoughts on the cutscene, Chandra playing for Roxy, just everything that went down. Someone can start us off. Kevin's face Snake. just absolutely <laughs> broke my heart. He was uh, so betrayed. He was yeah. so he didn't know what to do. Yeah. He was like, "What the heck?" Like, wh- I did, I did. As as um, people were saying in the chat that I thought, I thought Roxy was trying to steal Kevin from Kaiser. I did love that bait and switch with it because a lot of people in that live chat were like, "Oh my god, she's gonna take him from Kaiser." Mm-hmm. You, you think you think Kevin's gonna come back and not be with Kaiser his returning season? Y'all, come on, don't don't <laughs> shake your head at me, Frankie. I mean, look, anything can happen. I don't know. Yeah, but nah. But it was, I loved that bait and switch with it of how people were thinking that's what's going to happen. And then the shocker of the world is that because we all thought that Chundra was going to be this chaotic rogue agent. But no, 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 no. He's, he's just he, chaotic. Yeah. Just as chaotic. <laughs> just chaotic. He's just as chaotic. But he is Less rogue, part, more chaotic. Yeah. Yeah. He's going to be a part of a, apparently, this. Uh, the stars and I, uh, the real elephant in the room here. Are we getting a heel Alex Damon out of the deal? What's happening? Well, that's oh what boy. I really know. <laughs> he, that's what I want. He told know. me he told me no comment uh, and to contact his own personal PR firm that is running through 
very heelish behavior. That is, that is very heelish behavior. Uh, that is very heelish behavior. And and that out. PR firm is is run through Pippin, uh, which is our cat. Oh my I don't god, know. that's the biggest heel of them all. I don't know what he uh, wants me to do for that. Oh so. my god, he's like, please talk to my cat. I was thinking better. it might have been. He Cobb told me no Vance, comment. But <laughs> if it's not Cobb Vanth, it's Pippin. Pippin, good luck getting to Pippin. Pippin fights. Oh, he, I mean. oh yeah. <laughs> he brings out the claws quite literally. <laughs> oh God. Uh, I mean, look, we we can get back around to to find finding out what Alex thinks, just because there is a cutscene at the very end with Janine that we'll get to. Um, but look, this this is obviously big, and I think who is it? Jeremy and William, and I know William was a little bit more jokey on his. Well, he says, guys, I think Chunjo and Roxy might be <laughs> going out. What? Of the what? Don't I don't know. Did they say William? it out loud? That, my, I don't think so. He okay. did. Well, yeah, my, I don't know. Okay. But, they were uh, being like strangely polite during yeah. like the challenge, and but in a very stuff. condescending way. Yeah, yes. kill, kill them with kindness. Absolutely. That's how you. Yeah, do. yeah. Uh, Literally kill them. And then Jeremy <laughs> says here, "I'm glad they embraced Roxy being a full heel, and I like Chundra's Loki costume." Yeah, I think mm -hmm. the costume um, was perfect. It's only been yeah. four or five seasons, but it it now makes sense. It. It's the perfect time for Roxy to go heal. Like I think yeah. she can be a great heal too. I think she can yeah. be a really, really good heal. And now getting Chunjur on her team, no matter how it feels with other competitors, it puts her in that heal category going forward. And maybe that's what she needed. Maybe, maybe exactly all the women needed. managers are going to be heels this year. Ooh. All the ladies are evil. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. That's, that's the theme true. song, apparently. Um, You're welcome. All right, let, let's get to this match, though, because this this was this was something. This match was crazy. Uh, Chundru is up by two after round one because he goes perfect with the bonus question. Um, but Kev does not get any kind of uh, emotional sway there, and he spins, uh, if I'm not mistaken, oh, goodness. Why am I alien going? versus Predator. Alien, no, was it Alien versus Predator? No. Batman. It was Batman. 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 It was Batman. Batman. He took Man. it right away. Uh, a five and he goes through that. He goes through that category. Crushes it. Uh, Chunju gets Wizarding World. Obviously, we know what Chunju does with so much World. Wizarding World. That can I just say? I I'm pretty <laughs> sure I already talked. I talked to a couple people about this, but that thieves downfall question. I was like, that thing has a name. Like I had no clue that thing had a name, and I'm like, this is in round two. Uh, do I know Harry Potter? I had like this existential <laughs> crisis. I was like, what is happening? But What's crazy is I had just watched Deathly Hallows part one and two like a couple days ago, and I had no idea what the answer was. They, I think they say it like once, <laughs> yeah. like in passing, like crazy, crazy questions. But of course, as Chundru as Chundru does, wrecked shop, perfect round two. Yeah, he do. No. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then and then we obviously get to round three, and every question is answered except for Chundru's five pointer. Which lands in Kevin Smith's <sighs> favor, and he ends up winning the matches. Return to the Shmo down ends the best way it possibly can, uh, and he ends up taking the victory. Um, before we get to the emotional side of this, I do want to talk about the match. Uh, I know a couple people brought it up already, but that challenge. Do we yeah. want to talk about that challenge? Well, I liked the challenge. challenge. And to be completely honest, I will go ahead and say, and not because of anything other than just the challenge. Alex was on Chandra's side for the challenge. Okay, heel. Yeah, okay, heel. heel I that's see heel you. Move. I would have been fine. Uh, well, I wanted Smets, but I would have been fine technically either way because either way was kind of like I can see what this person is saying, mm -hmm. and I can see what this person is saying, and both of them aren't technically wrong. Yeah, it, it was one of the better challenges. Yeah, I liked it. I see people saying that this is a dumb challenge. It was a waste of time. Not challenge. at all. I no. disagree. No, I that was really a great challenge. Because what that challenge actually, what it really did was it. I know people can say, oh, was it meant to rattle smash? It very well could have been. But yeah. what it also really did do was it, it challenged <laughs> the the writers in a sense saying, okay, well, what exactly are you are, are we trying to ask here? What's the yeah. answer we're trying to look for? Because the the Tyn Tyrannosaurus Rex, a buck, male, you know, that whole spiel in the movie, like, that's very prominent. Like, even when I was watching that happen, I was like, 
is he going to say the male part? Because it's mm -hmm. it's like it really stands out to me. You know, it's an iconic. Movie. He says yeah. it a lot. Yeah, he says it. And so, yeah. but what it but ultimately that's not comes what down they asked to for. exactly. And they asked for what species. And exactly. Gender, and so, gender is not included in. And so species. I don't think it was a waste of a challenge. And, I don't think and, so either. And no. even in hindsight, you can't say it was a waste of a challenge, right? Because where else, where else is Chandra going to challenge in this match? Well, and, is yeah, there and, another legitimate spot that I, I don't, I can't recall off the top of my so. head where he would issue a challenge? So this is really the best spot he could have issued a challenge. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Unless somebody else has an argument for a better part in the match where he could have used a no. challenge in hindsight, no. you know. No. Well, and, and Jill, you said it earlier while we were all talking before we went live, but. Kevin does have a little bit of a history about getting rattled by challenges. He does. He does. Um, and he does. And so then Frankie touched on that, that this could have 100% have been just a challenge to mm -hmm. maybe for just for gameplay purposes. I think it feels Especially column A and column playing. B, you know. Yeah, 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 I, for sure. I think it's more of that Chundru is very specific with his answers yeah. and if he knows it he Shandru knows is, yes. the yeah, full yeah. extent of it and in this case that was one of those cases and yeah. to me it's a good challenge if i'm sitting there going oh which way is this gonna go and not knowing until it is actually said yeah so to me i think that was one of the better challenges we've seen in a while i agree yeah i agree it's the best but, challenge we've seen this season Oh, imagine that. <laughs> I think challenges in IG and Star Wars are usually going to be, I think, pretty good. Just pretty good just because ev everything is so specific and yeah. we know Star Wars and, you know, the IG players know I the IG movies so, so, so well that, yeah. like, when a challenge comes up in an IG or a Star Wars match, it's like, it's because it's a very specific thing that someone thinks should have been part of the answer. So I, that's that's going to continue to happen with, with those divisions, I think. This mm -hmm. this also kind of, I feel like another person I could see challenged exactly like this would be Kalinowski. Yeah. I can mm -hmm. absolutely see him throwing out a challenge like this. Well, honestly, I can see going forward this year after the rule changes and the breakdown of like how questions are going to be asked and what we're looking for in questions... You know, like even Video Drew made that joke about knowing the full title of T2, right? Um, I think you'll see a lot of IG and Star Wars players going very specific with a lot of things because of the rule changes in the offseason. Mm -hmm. And this is just like the tip of the iceberg. And maybe it was just Chundra's move and he did it in the moment. But I could see a lot of players, Mike included for sure, of pulling something like this because it's not the exact to the letter, dot, cross T's, etc. Yeah. And Brandon Hannon, because he's a nerd and likes Jurassic Park that much. <laughs> still, yeah. still waiting for my personalized apology, Brandon Hanna. Mm -hmm. Still waiting. We're, still we're waiting. going on one week. He's a nice guy now, so you might get it. I, I don't believe it, Frankie. I don't believe it until I get it. Mm -hmm. I, yep, he's still, um, still so, good in my eyes. You know, as, as much as I would love to talk about the challenge in Chunju, as Leo Logan says here, too bad it didn't go his way, though, because Kevin Smith is the victor. Yeah. Uh, and he That's did walk away. Okay. With a, with a big, big win, starting his season off strong. But also, he's been gone 15 months, as he mentioned through the match. And obviously, it's been an emotional journey for him and his family and everything they've gone through. Uh, and he's back in the win column. Uh, his first match back against probably his biggest rival at the moment in Chundru. Um, and starting off season nine in the best way it possibly can. I mean, it was it was Jilla and Frank. I couldn't imagine what it felt like in studio having that moment there after it was announced and everything. But just from seeing it from the screen, it was still emotional. Um, just what a what an incredible way to start the season. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was great. I mean, I was I was thrilled for the result, obviously. And and really just for the match as a whole, I just thought it played really, really great. Great match um, from beginning to end, you know, the, the Roxy stuff and Everything in between that came with that and the play itself and Chandra's antics. Even when Kev missed that first round question, you know, Chandra leaned into it. And even, As he does. <laughs> even picking the numbers for round three, you know, he was still yeah. throwing jabs and something. One Maybe day, if your I guy had more points, I, he could say, you know, number two. I swear, <laughs> one day Chandra's going to do that. Oh, you know, number number seven or eight for how many harry potter movies there are like one day he's gonna do something like that and that's gonna be his opponent's question and it's like cool you just gave him <laughs> the, like one day one day that's gonna happen 
guarantee it. And I think we finally also have seen the death of sexy numbers. They didn't happen. Oh, didn't get sexy. Well, yeah. yeah. So yeah, I agree. I, I agree. You didn't get sexy. Ah, Carissa beat you to it by like. Five seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Was anyone else like shocked that Chandru didn't know the five pointer that he got? A little bit. I didn't know. Apparently, it, so no. th- apparently, these two are signing up for IG because they were like, "I got it like that." And I'm Maybe like, it's because nerds? William Hootkins was in the the question, and I just know him as Porkins, and so I know like all the other films that he was in. But I saw that, <laughs> and I was like, "Come on, you know this." I, so I was actually, I was actually more shocked that he didn't even get the same franchise. Yeah. It's funny because I forgot that was that what I was anything talking. outside of Caribbean can be swashbuckling it's, so when yeah, it wasn't pirates brian I yeah know. <laughs> i just did it, it like so, i don't know why i just immediately went to what pirates movie is this and then when they said something else i was like oh oh crap i didn't even think even go towards that direction so mm-hmm. i yeah. do i do also really quick i want to point out what styling moves uh did say did he waste uh one of his repeats mm. on purpose like if, if you're talking about them. the two pointer, there's no way because I saw people in the live chat going, "Oh, he's just he's just using his repeats." Which... Nobody in that kind of match situation is going to waste yeah. two repeats on their two point question just for not shock even Chandra would do that. Not Jill, even. would not do that. No. Now, okay, here's one thing, Jill. Us being Harry Potter nerds, they figured out the fight easy. Did you not think that his two was easy? I, I I'm gonna be honest. I was when he said repeat. I went. Oh, I yeah. was stunned. I, I was like. like I was like Chandru. No. Like I, I was like who who else could it have yeah, been? Exactly. There's, there's a couple it's other people be who. Snape. Would, there's a because because I think in his mind he was thinking of like who's the Slytherin Quidditch captain. Like he was thinking of as an IG player. I feel like a lot of the times your brain is gonna go to what is a more difficult answer than like the go to of like Dumbledore or Snape. So I think that's kind of where I can't speak for him, obviously, but I feel like that's kind of where his mind went to. But I was, I was, I literally audibly gasped because I was stunned, especially because Harry Potter is his category. Yeah. Um, I'm very happy he was able to grab the answer and get it correct, but I was just like, oh, Chandra, no, like Chandra, no, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah. Like, but I yeah. think I think what what this showed is that when it comes to intergeekdom players and Star Wars players for that matter, that they're not, you know, these machines that just, you know, pop out yeah. these answers that you can, in fact, draw a blank on some of the easiest yeah. conceived, you know, um, questions. Um, when he used that first repeat, I was like, ah, all right, what's he doing here? But then he used a second one. I was like, oh, crap. I, I think he might yeah. be struggling to pull yeah. this. And um, I know people thought... He was playing games, and yeah, there's no way. you can you can think one way or the other. But um, if you know anything about Chandra and how he approaches the game, he, he's he's usually on top of it. He doesn't do things because they're unnecessary. There's a, always He'll, a point to doing something in the match, whether it's antics and or it using was, a repeat. A it was challenge. the first one too of the second round for him, right? Yeah, it was the two pointer. Yeah, it was his yeah. two pointer. Very round three. first question. So like, it was his. It, just... it was his round three two pointer, and like, because what Chundru will do, he will run the clock out. He'll pull like a Ben Bateman, as they call it, and he'll run the clock out, and he'll give his answer at like the very last second. He'll do that, but I don't think him, Smets, Kalinowski, they're not going to waste Bateman even. They're not going to waste unless it's his five. Unless it's his five pointer, and he knows it, that he's going to use his repeats. But they're not going to waste repeats on a two point round three question like just because they're not going to do that mm-hmm. yeah but maybe he did and i'm completely wrong <laughs> but I, but i don't think he did i think uh, if you're gonna joke you're not gonna waste over half of your jt no you'll do one before you even get yeah. to yeah. five yeah it doesn't make any sense no. in any capacity unless did did he and it, i'm I'm blanking, but did he have one for his five pointer? Did he, he had have one? one? Yeah, he had one. one. Right. He, he had one. one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I know. I, he, think... I know. In the in the post, he said that he wasn't worried about it. But how much do you think he was worried about it not having those JTs in that moment? Yeah. Mm. No, not, not too much. I think um, he said he, he wouldn't I, have known it either way. Yeah, he was already, I think, focused on one track, one line of thinking, and he just wasn't able to budge from it. Couldn't and, derail. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, and that Tim said in the chat said, never forget the studio lights can get to even the best players of the game. Very true. Yeah. Especially, you know, first big uh, recording day yeah. back. Uh, brand new studio lights. lights. Brand, new, brand stu- new Yeah, studio. brand new studio. There's a lot of pressure on both, on, on all of these players mm-hmm. to open up the season like this and to, to just like give everyone a good game. We've seen it behind computer ring lights too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I forgot Kira's name in a match. <laughs> you forgot Kira's. Oh, that's right. You did forget Kira. Mm-hmm. That's right. It happens to I the just, best of us. In my brain, I kept saying Amelia Clark, Amelia Clark. And I was like, what the crap is her character's name? And ha- yeah. When you have, it when happens. you have, yeah, when, like what Frankie was saying, when you have all of this information in your brain, there's just going to be those moments where you're just not going to be able to pull. It might be in your Rolodex and your Rolodex in your brain somewhere, but you might. Within 15 seconds. Sometimes the seconds, pages stick yeah. together. Yeah. And so, exactly. Like, oh. there you, and you're like, oh, God. Yeah. So <laughs> it happens. It happens to the best players. So. Well, after the post interview and a very emotional one with Jen Sturger, uh, we get uh, what seems to be a close from Christian Harloff and Mark Ellis on the whole event. But then we hear some music in the background. And one JTE walks up in the center stage uh, and goes on a little spiel about how he has beaten the best and he's still not given the best opportunities. Um, and, you know, how he hasn't played Dan Merle just yet. Uh, and then he calls out Brennan the Kid Meyer and that he wants to wipe away Shazam because he's beat Bibbs. He wants to beat the other half of Shazam. And Brennan the Kid Meyer, in the best way possible, walks up in his little just joyous. Walk Canadian, <laughs> smiling just face, to be there. and he and he just he shakes JT in the best way possible, and JT just you know, kind of loses it, walks off the stage, um, and it seems like that's going to be one of our first Titan matches I, is JT versus Brendan Meyer. I love how Brendan, even in his complete baby face <laughs> way, dealt so much shade to <laughs> JT. He was like, "Oh, do you want to hold it? This used to be yours, yeah. right?" Like I was like, "Oh." Well, then he, then he goes, well, not this one exactly, but this one's a little bit better. This is a little it? bit better, and I'm just like, Brendan! <laughs> I'm going to have to send him one yeah, of these. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, Brendan! Do like, that, <laughs> but it needs to be Canada colors. Oh, yeah. It should say shade, it's eh? Canadian shade. Shade, eh? Shade, eh? Shade, eh? Like, I, I fr- I, y'all know, I can, I can sing the graces of Brandon Meyer for Me a long time. Me too. Um, Me too. And I'm, I never would have guessed JT and Brendan, unless it's like in a tournament setting, would ever get like a match like this. So I am very, very excited to see it happen. Um, they both went really far last year. Both great uh, players. Yeah. J- like, like he said, he beat, he beat Adam Collins. He was in a number one contenders match. Brendan Meyer almost made it to the very end. Um, it makes sense that they're playing each other. Uh, and I'm excited too. It's very, it, it's two very different tiles of sh- styles of Schmodown. Um, and we're going to see if, if, you know, JT has still got it against one of the best. So I'm, I'm excited. I'm, I'm super excited for this one. Yep. Yeah. It's like David and Goliath, except the actual literal just size of the people. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yep. Jeffrey Khan JTE stands for the E stands for excellence now. So he's Josh, the excellence. And this and something something that I just <laughs> thought of too is this is gonna be I think the first instance we've seen of a factioned player and a rogue player. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because J no uh yeah, JT, JT yeah, JT is yeah, not on right. a faction. You're right. Because he was dropped from the exchange. You're right. Mm-hmm. Right. So it's unless, gonna be the- unless he's there crazy uh oh wait, no, that wouldn't make sense because he's only playing one division. I mean what if he yeah, I mean I don't know who he could play for JT. I don't know. I don't know where I don't he know. Would fit. So he could very well be a rogue player this I mean, year. Roxy is from Boston. He's from Boston. Yeah. He's, is he from Boston? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. he's a massive Patriots. Yeah. Hence, yeah, he's hard hence the Patriots name. Yeah, he's hard. Wow. He's yeah. hard. Sports. But that'll be cool to see is that it's going to be one of those like someone can just, you can earn points or you could, they could just, you don't, <laughs> you know? Yep. So mm-hmm. that's cool too. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, yeah, so after this announcement, uh, our final scene of the event before we closed was the Roxy, Chundru, and Janine the Machine moment here. Uh, as we see Janine kind of approach Roxy and Chundru and ask, like, okay, what the hell is going on? 
what was that out there? Why would you do that? Um, and Roxy just expects Janine to kind of follow lead a little bit and follow her and Chunji route. And she basically says, no, I don't trust you. I don't want a part of this. Like, this isn't what I signed up for. And after announcing that she's a part of the stars last week, Janine the Machine is now at the moment a rogue. She is up for grabs. Um, she is not committed to a faction, which is crazy to think about um, because of how well she played last year. Someone's got to scoop her up almost immediately, I would think. I'd hope so. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think, mm -hmm. you know, having that whole conversation uh, uh, with Ginny on Shmodan Rundown, which is on Saturdays, 9 a.m. Uh, okay, Pacific. listen. <laughs> listen. <laughs> you know, it's just like, you know, we had, that, we had a great banner on the bottom that said <laughs> Rundown at 9, 9 a.m. <laughs> you better, if, <laughs> if, if, if one of us is ever on your show, we're just going to I know, I mean, like. It's 9 a.m. Arctic time. On the we're gonna, show. We're going to come Saturday. on the show, just hold it, hold this. Anyway, Sunday's at 6 p.m. We might have to uh, PR call them first, though. So. As PJ says, uh, shameless plug. Shameless. Shameless. Yeah. shameless. Yeah, I've rumored her had it that uh, you were quite scared that you were going to lose to us this year. Choo-choo. Yeah. Choo -choo. Yeah, yeah. That's not, that's not a rumor. That's a fact. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, you know, I always think we're always going to lose, so that's... I feel you. Because you need to have the fear. You got to keep the fear. That's fear keeps you going. You got to have yeah. the fear. Um, all my all my friends fans will know that's about. I got you. I got you. Um, with with the, I just want to say, I I think all of us need to uh, get this this one uh, characteristic that Janine has, which is when your friends are being not very nice, call out your friends for not being nice, yeah. mm -hmm. and don't follow their lead. If your friends are being stupid. You tell them they're being stupid and they're not being nice, and you walk the other way. And she did. Just Jake, that. you're being. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> she, so. can, can we just go ahead and and get the the Taco Bells started as the a Taco Bells as a, as a yes. team? Uh, uh, and <laughs> great, she can yeah. be on the Taco Bells. Yes. yes. We well, are going to draft Bells. Janine the Machine to the Taco Bells. Great. <laughs> Do it. There are so many good names for a team you could use with Taco <laughs> Bell references. You could say the Baja Blasts. The Diablo. Uh, the Diablo. Diablo. Uh, what else? Nah, Taco Bells is where it's at with the yeah. Taco Bells. Yeah. Well, look, so when it comes to this move for Janine, uh, just kind of getting back track for a second. Um, oh, sorry. Sorry. No, no, no. You're you're fine. Fine. <laughs> I just haven't spoken on it yet. That's why. That's why. I just haven't spoken on it. Um, Roxy kind of planned her faction around her she was like the centerpiece oh, right? she yeah. was the singles player she was going to be a mainstay of a team's player um or team a team excuse me uh and now all she has at the moment is chunju for ig and then alex damon for star wars and we have yet to hear from alex on the situation that is going on with the stars so um and if he plays like he did last year that's not looking like a great team <laughs> <laughs> No, no comment. Jeez, good lord. <laughs> oh, goodness. Oh, oh my goodness. god. Damn. Um, wow. Anyway, moving on from that. Wow, wow, uh, wow. Look, Janine's going to go somewhere that she fits very well. I see a couple people in the chat saying Koi would be great for her. Koi would be great. Uh, maybe, she, maybe she joins up on the newbie Adam Witt. I don't know what Adam is, is looking like with his faction. Yeah. I mean, I think on. all options are possible aside from the stars and the den. It's so do you do you think that she could be corruption? No, come on. You yeah, not... I, I I do. She has that would a metal why. arm. Here's why. She Here's has why. a metal arm, Jake. <laughs> that would Here's be why. the ultimate way to like stick it to Roxy. That's, that's it exactly be. the point. It that's exactly be. the point. Because Shannon and Roxy, mm -hmm. you know, my mind Janet immediate... and Janine. Wow. My mind immediately went to the dungeon. Oh, I mean, yeah. Wait, the dungeon would be great. How much you mm -hmm. you know she loves Kevin? Yes, but now who Frank's doesn't got it, like Frank's got it in my head right now? If she goes to corruption, you have a Marisol Janine team. Oh, give it to oh. me! Oh no, that's very appetizing. Oh, oh that is that's all that I'm is saying. Very appetizing. That is that is all I'm saying. That's. <laughs> Don't threaten me with a good time, Jake. <laughs> I, 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 like I, I think all the factions are out the window. I, I want her. To oh wow, her. really? Even Shazam? I. I I th I would love her to be with Koi, but I think her and Marisol together would be fantastic. Give it 
it to me. Fantastic. Give it to me. Jake, who wins in the Shazam versus Janine and Marisol? Janine and Marisol. Shazam. Fight you. Oh. I'll fight Shazam you. Ooh, I'll Shazam fight you. Greatest team of all time. Harloff, you heard it. You heard it here first. Crazy. <laughs> I mean, no, he, you're you're not I wrong. Think, I think you heard it. You, you heard it from the right <laughs> Pacific. <laughs> At what time? Sorry, I missed 9 it. 9 a.m. 9 a.m. Pacific. 9 a.m. Our turn. On a Arctic. Saturday? If wanna, if yeah, wanna, I'm yeah, not yeah. even out of bed yet. Actually, we I mean, watch it in uh, bed. If you want to interact with wonderful. someone on a live show rather than a pre-recorded show, Sundays at 6 p.m. <laughs> oh. Just saying. Just Let's saying. hear that thwop, Molly. <laughs> <laughs> She's gotten a lot of use tonight. Yeah. <laughs> She's getting I mean, her money's worth. At least our show's better than someone. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. The only thing hey. you have us on us is Brad's damn little bo- beatbot board. You think that's it? You think that's all we have on you? You think that's it? That's all we think? We have the rumor train, Frank. We have the rumor train. No, you Sean don't. Oh, I'm trying to show it. I have a beatbot board. I just don't know oh. how to use it. I have a beatbot board. Dang. <laughs> the last time we used the beatbot defi- board, we got demonetized, so I don't know if it's... <laughs> Uh, yeah. The rumor train got us demonetized for his beatbot board. It's the official name, by the way. Yeah. Just can't Google it. Just Google beatbot board. Beat It'll board. come right up in front of us. Couldn't even tell you in the slightest what the real name a is. Sound, it's the beatbot sound board. board. There it is. Um, all right. Any Hi, any Jeff. final thoughts on uh, the first official event for season nine of the Shimona before we kind of wrap up here? How it went, what you were looking forward to this year the most. Thoughts. We back, baby. That's true. We back. That's true. Yeah, I'm just really, really excited for what this season is going to be. And I, I feel like we had a great start last night. And I feel like by the time we get to the end of the year, the end of the season, I think the show will – I mean, you always learn and evolve throughout the course of a season. So I'm, I'm very excited at, at – the evolution that Shimona has taken thus far. And I'm excited about what it could look like by the end of the year and, yeah. and all the matches and the quality and the scenes and storylines. I'm just really, really excited. I mean, look, uh, some people know that I moved out from Chicago to L.A. And it was a, I was a lot did? for this. You yeah, did? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and you know, I took my award-winning Schmodown rundown. You know, I was okay. like, "Hey, I'm gonna broadcast from <laughs> LA <laughs> now." Cut him off. And <laughs> cue the music, Jake. Yeah, yeah cue the music. All right, <laughs> right, 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 right. While speaking of uh, just a couple in the chat, also PJ's uh, about to get fired. Brian Ward. <laughs> Brian Ward says uh, no Astro fans on POV. So they I mean, win. look, you got me there, and, buddy. You got me there. Jake uh, Campbell, I hate to choose sides, but hashtag POV dominance. And Ooh. you know what? Do you Wait, hate Frank. choosing? Do you hate choosing whether or not you get a paycheck or not, PJ? <laughs> uh, you know, real tough decision. Frank, are you White Sox or Cubs? I'm a White Sox man. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. So interesting. I don't see anything on that shirt that says White Sox. I don't know why you Southside. Southside. <laughs> I don't. That looks like the Disneyland font. It, it does look like the Disneyland. Font. Font. Uh, the Disneyland got it from us, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we we'll let him use a it. Disneyland spirit jersey, Frankie. <laughs> yes, I am. Yeah, Mickey is a White Sox fan. Just, just, oh, yeah. Oh, okay. No, he's a White Not Gloves fan. Wow! Wow! Okay. Wow! Dad jokes. Now we have dad jokes. Wow, it's great. I, I apologize for that one. <laughs> um. Look, no, in, in all seriousness, I echo everything that Frank said. I think season nine at the moment is shaping up to be something very, very special. Yep. Uh, and I think a lot of that is due to the fact that we're in, back in studio. I, it, it's Bless. just, it, it's a real, real thing again. Um, and it's nothing against the digital era. And I loved everything about the digital era because we found so many new things that worked so well. And but um, I, just being back in studio has something really special around it. And I think this year is going to shape up to be something really, really fun. Uh, and I can't wait to see what everything, everything that goes down. Uh, I know Christian has a lot of plans. I know everyone, uh, including Frank, is hard at work. Uh, Frank, at, at hard at work? Things. What? Um, or hardly working. Or, am I right? Am I <laughs> right? No, no, no. no. Uh, a lot of work to be done. Night, a lot not of work a lot to be of done. stuff to do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but so far, so good. Uh, it's been crushing it. Even though we're one event in, I uh, am very, very much looking forward to everything that is 2022 for this rundown. So. Me too. Yeah. Same. Absolutely. We're back. We're back. It's funny because every time I heard 
like, Schmodown's back. I kept hearing Molly going, we're back, baby, in my head. It's, <laughs> like, baby. it's an internal thing now. <laughs> it's very catchy. It's very catchy. It is. Mm. Mm. Uh, all right. Well, we're going to go ahead and get out of here, everybody. Uh, that is our complete rundown. Uh, hey. oh, oh, my oh, God. Oh, oh, all right. Wow. All right. Yeah. All right. Wow. We're getting rid of Jake You're welcome. Wow. Right. <laughs> Check is in the uh, mail, Jake. Whoa. Okay, listen. <laughs> Uh, this, has been, everything... this has been the pay-per-view uh, match from our point of view. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, yeah, you're welcome. Plenty plenty of little ways to say that. Uh, but I'll let everyone do their own little <laughs> shameless plugs before we get out of here. Since you've heard it already enough for the show, I'll let Frank kick us off. Frank, where can everybody find you? Mute him. Mute him. Mute him. <laughs> 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 I didn't mute him. He's doing that on purpose. That's okay. oh. Am I back? Uh, it's Am I back? 10, p- 10 back. p.m. on Saturdays. Somewhere. Right. Sometimes zone it is. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> it's sometimes zone. It's on, sometimes it's on uh, Wednesday nights at yeah. uh, In all seriousness. 11 30. In all seriousness. Uh, yeah. But Friday Night Titans, that's going to be great. And then on Saturday, Saturday morning, wake up with the Showdown Rundown. Myself, Steph Sabra, who's now on the show with Brad Gilmore, that. Astros fan, for better or worse, it's for worse, but uh, 9 a.m. Pacific, 12 Eastern. Um, I think we're going to have a great season covering, you know, this Schmodown season. And uh, I look forward to your guys' coverage and see if you can maintain a level of professionalism. We've you know, never we'll maintained see. a level of wow. professionalism. When have we done that? I mean, uh, have level. you seen these two on Happy Hour? <laughs> have you watched Happy Hour? She doesn't hour? even remember. Oh, no, I've seen Happy Hour, but <laughs> what? That's, that's another That's another. Did we do that thing. this month already? I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> that's how you know you did one. You yeah. can't remember. Yep. That's how you know. Oh, okay. There you go. There you go. Uh, and Molly. Uh, oh, yeah. You can find me and Alex talking about Star Wars stuff over at Star Wars Explained. Uh, there's no shows happening right now until the end of May, so it's Legos. We're, we're scraping the bottom of the barrel for stuff to talk about. Yeah, Lego live streams I think are gonna stay around on Thursdays, so tune in for those because Alex gets really sassy. Yes, I love those. sassy Alex. And peep, yeah. People I heard the swear it. words kind of just. But yeah, um, oh yeah, he like went off on someone <gasps> uh, like two weeks ago, and we I had to calm him down. I was like, "What is what is wrong with you?" So <laughs> I I don't know. Maybe Roxy's been like sending him subliminal Yo, messages. Alex I don't. Confirmed. I know. Do you guys really think Alex could be a heel? Yes, he'd be the sweetest heel you would ever meet. He is. He's gonna steal your fans. He's gonna be a sassy. SOB could be. be. I'll I'll leave him to 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 say whether or not uh, he agrees with what's happening on the stars right now. I just want to see like a promo of him just like sitting next to Pippin while Pippin's about to push over a glass, pushes it over, and he's like, "Yeah, we're bad." <laughs> we're bad. So bad. And then he cleans it up. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and Brian. Uh, be a Volcino on Twitter. No Apocaflix this week because <gasps> we're going to go see the Batman. The nice. Batman. Nice. Our bats. Ba, 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 ba. Yeah. I'm going next Saturday, I think. I'm going it. at some point. <laughs> Whenever oh. Sean feels like it. I've already seen it. That's right. Oh, okay. Well, no, I haven't. <laughs> yeah. okay. But y'all believe me. So. <laughs> I've seen several Batman movies. It's <laughs> yes. They're all the same. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> The only maybe, Batman maybe, maybe you we'll, care about is Michael Keaton. Maybe we'll finally find out how his parents die. Maybe. Uh, it's a three-hour yeah. movie, so maybe. <laughs> maybe we'll fi- maybe they'll finally tell us how they died. Maybe we'll finally learn. <laughs> or or maybe they lived. Uh, That's a joke, by the way. I hope that was a joke. Yeah. Please don't. I don't need your um actually. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, you can find me, Jilly Marie, two eyes, two E's on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, sometimes you can find me on Sean's Twitch. Um, being in the background giving him food or something <laughs> <laughs> and uh yeah we're back baby Schmodown's back let's do it let's give me season nine let's go uh, a couple people in the chat have been mentioning it i see nathan uh grubbin here first says batman matches tomorrow check that out yeah uh, oh is it tomorrow, batman a tomorrow. That, was, that was a fun time let me tell you yeah so and just 
uh, you may or may not see a reaction from us. It won't be tomorrow uh, because we have our Patreon watch along tomorrow, everybody. Pew, 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 pew. Uh, we will be watching 10 Things I Hate About You tomorrow evening. Uh, and both Jill and Brian have actually never seen that movie. That's funny because oh. that's what I that's what I was going to say to PJ after this. Aww. I got ten things I hate. Ten about. things I hate <laughs> about you. Just ten? only, only uh, just, ten. <laughs> that's where I'm going to start, guys. All right, I'm going to pile it on. <laughs> only ten. But, <laughs> but yeah, so um, stay just stay tuned for updates on reactions from us. Uh, we definitely want to try and get a Batman win. We'll try our best to get one in from this past pay per view from yesterday. But if not, then we'll definitely start with Titans next weekend uh, for reactions, and you'll see POV reactions back on a weekly basis uh, here on the channel. Um, yes, yeah, Sundays at 6 o'clock Pacific every week live, so you can comment and chat Emphasis along with us. Live. Live show. Uh, <laughs> okay. And then, and then check out the Patreon <laughs> link for all kinds of fun things. If anything, uh, Frank loves that's not live. Yes. Movies. All right, everybody, we're out of here. Hope you guys have a great rest of your week. Bye, guys. Bye.